Hmm, I'm bored. Let's read a book. <gasps> By now it was early afternoon, and we had nearly reached the top of a particularly long hill. From what I could tell, the Vulgaros were circling over the next hill. I cast out my senses. The fight was over, for the soldiers were methodically moving on foot, their horses tethered or picketed. A point of white resided there as well, a living point of white, a chaos wizard. There was no point in trying to avoid the soldiers, not with more than a score of them plus a wizard who could track me. But I didn't like it. I had no desire to be any sort of hero. I just had less desire to be run down until I was too exhausted to fight. The soldiers couldn't fight what they couldn't see. The wizard was another question. Still, I looked behind me, as far as my senses would carry me. I wish I hadn't. Garlock tossed his head as if in mourning. More than two score cavalry had passed over the Southbrook Bridge and now trotted onward. Less than two long hills behind. Behind them, much further behind, I could sense a rolling wave of chaos and I couldn't tell for sure, but would have been willing to bet that it centered on a white gold coach and Antonin. I didn't know, but he was definitely on my trail. All of this had developed because I didn't want something to repay Destrum for his support and to ensure a future for Deirdre. But given the results and Justin's warnings, Antonin meddling in the war between Gallus and Kyphros it wasn't as though I had much choice. Someone thought that I was a real wizard loose, and all my actions had pointed to me. And I scarcely knew what I was doing. So they wanted me, whatever the cost, all too predictable. I glanced back over my shoulder. Gearlock's protest jerked my head back toward the crest of the hill before us. Right-handed, I chucked the reins. Come on, old fellow, we can't exactly turn back. No, we can't. The prefect might let you haul baggage carts. But I'd end up at the festivities in his central square. The central attraction, you might say. I extended my left hand towards the staff, still safe and waiting in the saddle holder. Ooh... The subjective heat flashed my fingers even before they reached the black lorcan of my staff. Something was definitely waiting over the crest of the trail, where those soldiers and their attendant wizard waited. I shrugged. What choice did I have? A few worn-out soldiers and a less capable wizard ahead, or fresh troops in Anton and behind? The choice was clear enough. I just didn't like either alternative. I wiped my forehead, even though I knew neither the sun's heat nor glare had reached through my shield. I know. There are evil types behind us and worse in front of us. But you're going to have to give up the idea of hauling baggage for the prefect. Again, I tried to sense what lay over the hill crest before me, whatever it was that Gerlock disliked. All I could feel was a sense of heat of the fire that was the chaos trademark. He whinnied again. I know. I chucked the reins again, then grabbed for my staff. The faint sounds of a horn echoed from behind me. Just wonderful. On a beautiful, sunlit fall day in Kandar, I was sitting in the middle of a room between Gallus and Kyphros. A wonderful day for a picnic, or even a ride. Too bad there were bloodthirsty galleons behind me and in front of me a wizard with each troop. I know, it wasn't exactly my idea either. Since we crossed the hill crest and started down, clink, down slope more than a score of armed troopers were mechanically eluding what had to be bodies. The mechanical nature of the movements told me that the victors, this time, had been the prefect's troops. Harmon! Form up your swad. Wizard says there's an armed man coming. In spite of myself, I grinned. Me? 
an armed man with a small knife and a staff that was only defensive. Darius, Nurshel, move it! Five mounted figures drew together and began walking uphill. How far? Right at the hilltop. There was no one there. Nerve wracking as it was, I guided Gerlock onto the side of the road, into the grasses, gambling that the scratch sounds of damp grass would be less obvious than hoof prints suddenly appearing in the, on the clay road. The nearest rider had passed less than two arm lengths from us as the five men headed up the road. Check the road for hoof prints. Somebody was thinking, unfortunately. We kept moving toward the troop. The wizard, a blob of white, mounted on a horse that was probably also white, waited in the saddle of a tall pine downhill from the man who shouted the orders. Gerlock whinnied. What was that? Quiet, I whispered into Gerlock's ear, patting his neck. Quiet. We had to get closer to the white wizard, but not seem as though we were my purpose. So I kept Gerlock headed downhill, paralleling the road. He's past you, you idiots. Turn around. Look for hoof prints. Marks in the grass. By then we were nearly abreast of the heavyset officer who bellowed. Beside him were two other mounted men, plus two prisoners on horseback. At least they were still blindfolded and their hands tied behind them. And I was powerless to do anything to save them, not with my own order powers, at least. Still, I found myself turning Gerlock across the road, straight toward the officer. He said it toward you, the flat voice carried uphill from the shaded wizard. He said it this way, the officer yanked his sword out, as did the pair beside him. His clang. Harmon! Almost easy it was, just a quick blow with the staff to the wrists of three men, who still couldn't see me. So chaos-filled were they that the mere touch of the staff was agony, and I encouraged their horses to run. After knocking the reins of the two captives' horses from the hands of the third man, then I jammed the staff back into the holder and used my knife to slash the bonds of the prisoners. That took too long, trying to cut the rope from pony back isn't easy. A bolt of pure chaos fire licked around me, and I expanded the shield around the two. Hold still, I hissed. Gagged, of course, and probably telling me to get on with it. Harmon, get him! Another sheet of flame cascaded off my shields. I cut the woman's wrist a bit, but finally severed the heavy cord and pressed the knife into her hand. You have to free your friend, I snapped, reaching up and yanking off the blindfold. Don't scream, you can't see me. Not a silly witch-like. She muttered as she used her other hand to rip the blindfold on the gag. Gerlock wheeled away from the two captives, which I would have liked to run. Unless I kept the wizard busy, there was nothing to keep him from frying the captives. So we charged, as much as the mountain pony and an idiot woodcrafter, with little ability with order magic and a good staff, could charge. The heat and force nearly collapsed my shields in on me, somehow drawn to the staff before me. Gerlock's hooves actually drummed on the meadow turf, and I grabbed for my staff again, hoping my trembling knees could hold me in place on the suddenly very unsteady Gerlock. They're escaping! Who's escaping? Oost. The staff deflected the fire, and that was all it would do, gathering some and letting the rest sheet off, almost as if I was fighting with it rather than with the other wizard. You see that? Forget the wizards, get the captives! Where are they? Gerlock and I half tumbled, half thundered down hill toward the wizard on his white horse. Just keep going. I got the staff ready. The white horse turned. Staff and firebolt had met at the wi wizard's fingertips. 
For a long instant I sat there, momentarily near deaf, with the hissing still crackling in my ears, shaking my head, before realizing that the white wizard horse had reared, and that a dead man lay on the turf, still dressed in white. Even as I watched, his face turned to ashes and bones, and then the bones began to disintegrate. There he is, another wizard, a black one! My shields had gone with the clash, leaving me in full sight of two darned many galleon soldiers. Jernan, the captives! Shaking, head splitting, guts turning, I nudged Gearlock past the heap of ashes that had been a white wizard, and back toward the road. Use your bows! bellowed the heavy set officer. Your bows, idiots! Somehow I gathered enough of a light shield around us, just enough to cloak us for a while as we both staggered away. He's gone! Guess where he is! I didn't know that they did, except if, that if they shot at us, they missed. And I did know that I was now in big trouble. Antonym wasn't about to overlook the killing of another white wizard, however accidental it might have been. And the Otarch's troops, assuming the captives had made it back safely, wouldn't be thrilled about a black wizard running around loose either. While I wasn't a black wizard, they, that was bound to be the way I was described. My head ached, my eyes burned, my ears kept chiming in discordant minor keys, and there was a taste of bile in my throat. I'd played hero and rescued two whole captives, maybe and alerted every white wizard in Kandar. Gearlock whinnied at me. Yeah, I know. Somehow we trotted along the through the afternoon, at least long enough that the simmering disorder that represented Antonin and the mess I had made disappeared behind us. In the meantime, the clouds from the west rolled in. Thrum... The hills became more than hills and less than the east thorns. And the road stopped rising and falling and turned into a near steady grade. Long before sunset, I turned Gearlock up a deserted arroyo that had tufts of grass and a clean, if narrow, stream. There was an overhang sheltered from both the road and the overhead obser observation. Then I unsaddled Gerlock, stacked the saddlebags, unpacked the bedroll, and collapsed. I did manage to make some silent wards, a type of shield I'd read about but never tried. It didn't make us invisible, just reduced the level of order that escaped from around us. Something not very useful in hiding from bandits, but very useful in hiding from Antonin. The problem was that you couldn't do both at once. At least I couldn't. An antonym was the bigger problem in the dark. A wet tongue woke me into near darkness. Despite the thunder, no rain had fallen. The ringing in my ears was gone, but not the shakiness in my hands or the splitting headache that felt like thunder between my ears. After crawling down the brook, dunking my head and drinking, the shakiness subsided into an occasional tremble and I realized my crawl had covered my trousers with mud. I also realized that Gerlock was hungry. Good horse, good pony. I patted his neck, but he nipped at me just enough to indicate that words were not what he wanted. Two grain cakes took care of his problem. He was a pig, but he saved my neck too many times to count. So I munched on the travel bread, ignored my headache for a time longer, and brushed my four-footed savior. Then I had some fruit and some more bread and went back to sleep. In the morning, I washed the mud off my trousers and laid them in the sun to dry. We both ate again before I washed up myself and even shaved. I was in no hurry. Antonin clearly hadn't followed me since I was still alive, and there was no point in heading into more trouble immediately. There was also no point in malingering. So, slightly after mid-morning, I resaddled Gerlog, picked up the gear, and headed back to the road. If one thing, I had been wrong. Coach tracks marked the cracking clay of the road. I shivered. 
but there was nothing else I could do. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, please like, comment, and subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss out on any of my videos. See y'all in the next one. Goodbye!